Good morning. I am going to do my makeup today. It's raining outside, so if you hear some rain sounds, that's obviously what it is. I'm going to also ask some questions. I did a Q&A over on Instagram, and I haven't answered all of the questions, so I thought I'd save some for here, just so I have something to talk about as I'm doing my makeup. I'm not going anywhere. I just applied a gradual tan last night, so I like to make the most of it by applying makeup. I'm going to use the Fenty Proof Filter uh, Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. Bummed they discontinued the hydrating one. That was such a nice formula. I don't know why. Why? But because this is the matte version, I'll use the Smashbox Primerizer Hydrating oops, Primer just to give my skin a bit of a boost. I don't apply the fake tan on my face. I used to, but now that I'm dealing with this rosacea um, situation, I am just being, oh, what's it called? A lot more gentle with my skin. And I just, I don't know. When I complete the course of the cream that I'm using to help with this stuff, then perhaps I'll start fake tanning my face again because my skin never used to have an issue with it before and it probably would be fine if I used it on my face. But again, I'm just not taking risks at the moment. And I'm using the gradual tan because I'm appreciating a more of a soft, more of a natural tan these days. Like my hands look fine. I mean, it didn't really develop very well on my chest, which is kind of annoying. It still kind of looks like my normal skin tone, but I don't know. It gives me a bit more of a glow to my skin. How do my arms look? My arms look fine too. I am trying to embrace my fair skin more though, because I haven't really ever done that. <laughs> and it's so much easier not to fake tan. But with that being said, I do really enjoy having a bit of a warmth to my skin. Well, the first question that just popped up was a loving tan question. I have fair skin also. What shade do you usually get? Well, it depends on what you want. If you want a really dramatic tan, then you just go for this. Damn it, it's too dark. Ah! I'm just going to blend it out and then I'll go over it with a lighter shade. I mean, I should have known. This is 240. This is the shade that I use when I have like my normal dark tan. Oh well, I'll just use it as like a warm base or something. In terms of the gradual tan, I'm using dark when I will use the mousses. When I want a dramatic tan, I use ultra dark. But if you just want like a bit of color to your skin, I would suggest starting a little bit uh, lower down in the <laughs> scale of intensity and go for like a medium perhaps. And then just monitoring your skin. And if you start to think it looks too dark, then you just wash it off. Got 190. We'll see how this goes. This is a random question. Have you had any facelifts slash beauty surgeries on your face? No, I love the idea of when I get older, having a, like a brow lift, I'm lifting my brows up a little bit higher, but I don't think I'm at that age yet. And I've got to remind myself that I look at myself in the mirror like this close, whereas most people aren't looking at my face like that. And when they're talking to me, they're not that close. And they're not seeing all the things that you see when you look in the mirror. Like I saw someone talk about this the other day um, on TikTok. But also I noticed that when I'm watching people on social media talking about their flaws like that they think that they have, I'm like, what are you talking about? Your face is perfect. What are you, how are you, how are you seeing what you're seeing? And so I like to remind my, that's, that's the right color. I like to remind myself of that whenever I'm like, fixating on a perceived flaw that I think I have. It's like, no, you're your own harshest critic and you stare at yourself in the mirror, whereas people, yeah, again, don't look at you like that when they look at you. They're just listening to what you're saying. They're not like analyzing your face for flaws or whatever like you think they are. And I don't want to be one of those people that does something to their face when they really didn't need to just because they're like being really critical of themselves. And I just yeah, remind myself, well, think about all the people that you see online that have beautiful faces that are finding all these flaws. And, and you think it's a shame that they're going to these lengths to like change or fix something that was never broken in the first place. So don't become one of those people. Be kind to yourself, etc, etc, etc. So no, I haven't done anything to my face. I've only had like 
Botox and fillers and that kind of thing. But at this point, that's really only in my forehead at the moment. Um, I don't have any in my lips. I mean, what I do have is just whatever's left over from like, I don't know, a year ago or something. But my body started to metabolize that really quickly for some reason, so it doesn't even stay in my body, so I haven't bothered to go back and get it more done. Long-winded way of answering that question and saying no. <laughs> Are you afraid of not being alive one day? Like what will it will be after death? No, I'm really not afraid of death. I'm afraid of a painful death, but I'm not afraid of death. Because I think about it as like when you, so this is the Hourglass uh, Banish Concealer in Cream. When you die, you're just dead. It's like when you go under anesthetic, general anesthetic, and you're talking to someone and the next minute you're just, time just, you, you, your consciousness just shuts down. like. It's like you just don't exist. Like your brain is 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 off, and you're not like you're not even dreaming. It's just nothing. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, and you have no recollection of what happened. It's like obviously the death thing. I don't think you wake up afterwards in, in like a different universe or something. Maybe you do. I don't know. But I think if you have a, regardless of how you died, I think you just are dead, and that's it. Your brain just shuts off. I mean. What happens after that is up for interpretation, you know, many religions believe different things about what happens to your body and that kind of thing. I mean, I don't know about that. I don't know. No one really knows what happens afterwards. I mean, a lot of religions have different interpretations of what happens after death. You know, there's reincarnation, there's hell, there's heaven, but no one really knows. You can believe something to be true, but no one really has proof, which I guess is why I'm um, agnostic. I used to think I was an atheist. I think I'm like an agnostic atheist. But then I believe in, I, I don't know, I believe in something. I just don't believe in a, in, in a god. Oh god, this concealer is absolutely stunning. Especially with this foundation. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I believe that we just, that no one knows. There could be something, there could be nothing. But I don't, I'm not scared of it. I'm scared of fear, obviously, like a slow and painful, traumatizing death. I think that's a fear of anyone's, but I'm not scared of being dead because I'll be dead. And that's, I feel sad for like people around me that would be grieving my death, but I'll be out of there. <laughs> Is consistency what got you noticed on social media first? <laughs> no, I've never been consistent. It's just, a yeah, I think about people like Shannon, like Shan XO, who is queen of consistency. I've said to her multiple times that like, I admire that about her so much. She's an absolute powerhouse, the way she just has always been so good with content. I honestly just think it was timing for me. I think I just got onto YouTube at the right time because, like, yeah, there were people in Australia that were doing it, doing the whole social media thing, but it wasn't like, it hadn't really taken off, and I don't know, I guess. A few people found my page and then it just spread really organically and perhaps they liked my personality or something. I don't know. I don't know. And then um, it just took off. So I think, yeah, a lot of it is just timing. And I guess also when I moved to Sydney, I was going clubbing a lot. So I really tapped into that uh, demographic of people that loved watching those kinds of videos because they were going through the same thing at the same time and like that's when my channel was at its peak is when I was going clubbing and doing my makeup and I have like my girlfriends in some of my videos and things like that that really fun like girly era so I think that really helped kind of sustain my growth I'm going to use the Hourglass uh, Veil Translucent Setting Powder this is such an incredible product I only started using it again recently gosh that concealer is so nice what product slash brand do you have ever been asked, ow, my elbow, ow, to promote? Worst product or brand you've ever been, been asked to promote? I don't think, oh, nothing s stays in my head. I've dealt with brands, well, my management have dealt with brands that are incredibly rude and unprofessional and that kind of thing, but I don't know if that counts. So that's why I'm glad that I have management because I'm not good at holding my tongue. Oh, it's raining. Um, but that's their job, to be professional. What color do you use in the Tribe Mineral Foundation? I use all the shades, but probably light the most frequent, a light medium, probably the most frequently because I don't turn as much anymore. Did you find the perfect jeans? I'm invested. 
Honestly, the ones that I ended up buying from Kmart and then cutting the ends off them, they ended up being my favorite. And they were like $28. I went back the other day and bought two more pairs, a backup of the main pair that I love, like that particular colorway, and then another colorway, just, just so I have both. I haven't gotten around to cutting them both yet, but yeah, they're just really nice jeans. They're a little bit too big, but I decided that I prefer bigger jeans to smaller jeans because I will actually wear them and I don't like how when I wear smaller jeans that are technically the right size yeah they, they dig in and they leave like there's marks on your belly and when I sit down and I yeah I just don't like that but when I wear bigger ones I feel a lot more I'm more inclined to wear tighter tops because my like stomach doesn't get squeezed in by the by the waistband of the jeans and stuff so I can wear the, the tops that I want to wear but probably don't feel as comfortable wearing if I'm wearing my snug jeans if you know what i'm saying i have a reel i think it's a reel on my instagram um if you want to know what jeans those are so annoying i like put effort into blow drying my hair this morning and it so quickly just loses the shape and as soon as i put it behind my ears i get those like kinks anyway. i'm actually going to use this kosas light a soft bronze baked powder in light. I haven't really used this much to be honest. But I'll use it just a bit here. Okay, so backstory. Someone on my in little question and answer box yesterday said, When are you gonna get like a real job and not on social media or whatever? <laughs> what do you mean? What even is a real job, first of all? And I replied, actually I'll share with you what my reply was. You know how you can send reactions, there's so many on that story. I said, in other words, would I like to stop working for myself from home, making a great income by being myself and sharing things that I love with people that care, and swap that for a thankless 9 to 5 job working for somebody else for a fraction of the income? Hmm, let me think about that. And then someone sent a follow-up message saying, LMAO, get a real job as if you don't own and run your own business. And then I said, yep, but even if I didn't, if I've been able to live exclusively and very comfortably off this social media job for 11 years, I think I'm doing okay. So, people were just, can't believe people saying, I can't believe people like actually ask you that question. And someone just said, uh, where is it? Don't you get lonely not having a real job? Do you miss people slash feel pointless? I feel some projecting going on here. Do I feel pointless because I don't have a real job? Do you miss people slash feel pointless? First of all, I never miss people. I am not a people person. The only people that I like are those of you who I interact with in this community. That are friendly not people like that <laughs> my friends and my family i i am an introvert of all introverts i am a, a homebody i could happily exist without seeing another human being probably for a long period of time i do not miss people i do not need people to feel like some kind of satisfaction within myself or happiness or to feel like i have a point as a human being feel pointless what do you mean? My job has more of a point than probably any other job I could get. The amount of people that I've been able to connect with, help in some way over the last 11 years, the amount of messages that I get from people saying thank you for helping them out in some aspect of, of their life, whether it be body image, a breakup, confidence, bullying, any of that kind of stuff. I have more connection and more of a, of a I have more purpose with this, I have more of a reach, I have more um, opportunities to help with this job, this fake job that apparently isn't real. Don't you get lonely? Never, ever. I never get lonely. Not having a real job. And what even is a real job? Is it literally just like a soulless nine to five? Do I have to work in an office for you to think that I have a real job? How, how is it not a real job if I've been doing this for 11 years, exclusively for 11 years? And like nothing's changed. Like I'm still able to sustain the exact kind of life that I've always lived. <laughs> so weird. 
Hey guys, I'm just editing this and I wanted to clarify for those that will be offended by anything. Obviously, I'm not saying that if you have a nine to five job, like your life is pointless or that it's not good enough or that you should be striving for more because I know a hell of a lot of people that find a hell of a lot of fulfillment with their job, within their job. I'm just saying soulless and thankless because that's what I feel like they're asking me to do. Like, why would I change what I'm doing, which is obviously working for something that doesn't fulfill me. But inherently that doesn't mean that all nine to five office jobs are a waste of your potential or anything like that, or can't add value to your life in any way. I assume that he will know that, but I had someone message me yesterday saying that my response was snarky. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, if you're going to find offense in that, you're going to find offense in anything that I say. I understand that if you did take it that way, I didn't mean to offend you or I didn't mean to come across that way. Yep. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. But I don't feel like that bronzer really did a whole lot. Hourglass, ambient, lighting blush, and incandescent Electra. I haven't even really used this before, I don't think. I just love Hourglass. Their products are just bloody beautiful. How do you always seem so happy and at ease? Do you ever feel anxious? You are a goal. Aw, so nice. But I feel anxious for sure in different sorts situations but i don't think i have anxiety i feel anxious or nervous when i'm in busy areas like shopping centers or with lots of people around i don't feel comfortable in that kind of setting i think it all stems from when i was younger and i had a lot of people recognizing me and stuff but someone who's really like self-aware and paranoid and shy i think it makes me feel nervous knowing that there are people like watching me and judging what i'm doing from afar and people taking like secret photos and stuff like that that makes me feel anxious because i I don't feel safe because I don't know why. I, I'm assuming 99.5% of them are like lovely people that actually follow me. But the thing is that little thought creeps in like, what if they're making fun of me? I, I don't know. I guess that probably stems from being bullied in high school. <laughs> How do you always seem so happy? I guess I just always followed my heart and I've always trusted my gut. Even when people have said that I should do something else or, um, I don't know, like I just, oh, this is beautiful, this color. How have I not used this before? Who am I? Jeez, this is stunning. All these products together look so nice. You can see because the camera's overexposed. But I don't know. I just, I think I also have a lot of, which is probably what people get from religion. I feel like if things go bad in my life, I do believe that everything just kind of unfolds how it's meant to. I guess people can, I, people that are religious might call that like God's plan or whatever. I don't. Again, I don't think there is an entity. I don't, I don't think there is one being. I think we all just belong to the universe. And we're all just like little atoms that are just vibrating and we're all just... <laughs> I don't know. I just don't believe in some like ruling leader that is, exists up in the clouds or in the galaxies or something. But I guess I do believe in like the law of attraction and that kind of thing and putting out there what you want and receiving that back in some form and not knowing how it might come back to you, but it will come back and... Also just learning from your mistakes. And I think just, I really try to find the silver lining in situations. Um, like even with my mascara thing at the moment with all that, all those things that are going wrong and all the delays that I'm experiencing, I try to remind myself like, yes, it's a stressful situation, but stressing about it is not gonna change anything. Like worrying and becoming anxious and nervous and frustrated and angry, it's not gonna change the outcome. It's just gonna be really detrimental to my mental health. So just to kind of like let it go and as long as I've done everything that I can to get it back on track, um, then that's all I can do and I've just got to be patient and wait. And even, yeah, with when things go bad and that, that kind of thing, sometimes it's not easy to see the silver lining in the moment. Like if you've got a really, if you've just been through a really bad breakup, it's hard to be like, oh, I'm so glad that happened. I've learned so much. But slowly with time, I think you do start to feel that way. Like you look back without those rose colored glasses and you're like, ah, oh, that person that I was dating, like they did this and that really didn't work for me. It made me feel bad about myself or it made me second guess myself or it brought out something in me that I don't like and that I need to work on and that might, you know, make the relationship better in the future with somebody else. Like if I can identify the things that I was responsible for in that relationship or the things that he was responsible or she was responsible for, then perhaps in the future, then I can, you know, make those changes and then have a better quality relationship going forward. I think I just, I don't know. I just like to see the silver linings in life because it's all you can really do. And granted, I've had a very um, 
I, I have been incredibly lucky to have a slave upbringing and that makes such a big difference in the way I live my life as an adult. Like if I had suffered some serious childhood trauma or I didn't have any like stable, um, if I didn't have, have a stable upbringing or like abusive parents or anything like that, it would probably be a lot more difficult for me to have the outlook that I have, so I definitely acknowledge that. I guess it all just kind of plays a part. And I've also just always followed my heart, as I said at the start of this thing. Like each step along the way, I have taken the potentially riskier route, but banked on the fact that it will make me happy, because I've was it's what my heart wants, which is so cliche. <laughs> anyway, all those products look great together. Uh, this is the, uh, what is this, this brand? Il Maquillage Gimme More Mineral Baked Highlighter. I'm going to go do my brows off camera because those are lounge face products that are not yet released that I will be using and I cannot show them just yet because, as I said, they're not released. I want to do a really simple eye look. Again, I'm not, this isn't like a makeup tutorial, I'm just <laughs> filming while I do my makeup. I'm just doing a classic natural look, you know? Are you still vegan or vegetarian? I've never been vegan. I was eating like exclusively plant-based for a while back a few years ago, but I am just vegetarian. I have been vegetarian since I was 14, 15 years. Yes, 15 years. And I will never not be a vegetarian. Um, I will never eat meat again. This might be too personal, but are you still friends with Chloe Morello? Loved your YouTube collabs. I feel like this is such a common question that people ask and assume that just because we filmed those videos like back in the day that we're, I don't know. I mean, we're just, we live completely different lives. Like I don't, we don't ever talk really. Um, we were friends when I lived in Sydney and we were friends for a little while after that, but you just kind of like drift apart. You don't really stay in contact. Like I don't really, I've never really been close friends with anyone from YouTube at all, ever really. Literally except when I basically first moved to Sydney, that was probably when Chloe and I were the closest. But yeah, like from what I see, she has her beautiful little family, she lives in the States, and it looks like life is amazing and I genuinely couldn't be happy for her, but we're not really, we're just not, we don't have that kind of relationship. I, I guess we're still friends, like I don't think we know what constitutes friends. I think acquaintances is too distant, but we're not friends that's like, hey girl, what's up? <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's not like for any reason. I think it's probably what people are wondering as well. It isn't like, no one's done anything. It's it's not like someone's angry with someone else. It's just we're different people now and we don't really have a reason to be in close contact. Did you enjoy your glam life at the time in Sydney? Following since day one. Thank you so much, that's awesome. Did you enjoy your glam life? Yeah, that was like one of the Best times of my life living in Sydney with my girlfriends and going out clubbing all the time. Gosh, we really made the most of it. Those were fun times. Such fun times. I'm going to do this uh, with my eyelashes. <laughs> I'm going to use the Milk Makeup Grip Hydro Eye Primer. So this is a little trick that I saw Alexandra Anelli or Anil do on YouTube. And it's basically curling the lashes and then applying primer, like eye primer for your eyelids, onto your lashes, waiting for it to dry, and then applying mascara. And it holds the curl so much better. I don't know how it does it. So curl them first. That's something that I don't like about getting older is that my lashes have like straightened out and thinned out a little bit. And my lashes were always like my favorite thing about my face. <laughs> My favorite, like my favorite feature. So I feel like I'm mourning something that I once had. I mean, they're still, look, I'm being so dramatic. They're still long and everything, but they're just not as impressive as they used to be. So I've curled my lashes and now I am going to go straight in with the primer. Okay, I douse them. How have you managed the cyber bullying that many influencers deal with? It is usually at its worst when you are at your most popular, which makes sense because the more eyes you have watching you, the greater the chance that people are, that some of those eyes are going to be eyes that don't like what you do. <laughs> the eyes of people who do not like you. 
and it's very very difficult and consequentially consequently consequentially that's a new word consequently I find that a lot of influencers become a lot happier when they're like it, it's a weird situation where you're happier um, because you're not getting as many mean comments when your channel starts to slow down but then you're also sad because you're like kind of again mourning the loss of like your old persona and your popularity and things like that so it's kind of like a double-edged sword um, and you often find the influence kind of settled into a kind of content that they probably always wanted to do when their channel slows down a little bit um, because they feel a little bit happier and more inspired and there's less pressure on them from so many people watching their videos telling them like what they want to see and do I think you develop a thick skin but I think it's unnatural for it like not to get to you somehow and for it to not to have an effect on you because I know it definitely had an effect on me and I had to take some time off the internet and then when I did film people were like it seems like you're you, you never want to be here it seems like you don't want to film it seems like you're not inspired it seems like you're bored and I'm like, well, this doesn't make me feel any better. I'm kind of struggling, but I'm doing my best. I'm trying to show, like, come on here and still interact with people despite how I feel. But then you get people saying, like, it's obvious that you are not happy. And it's just this vicious cycle. Then you start feeling guilty. And then you put more pressure on yourself to, you know, show up and put a smiley face and that kind of thing. But I don't know. It's really it's kind of jarring now when I do get a mean comment because I'm like wow I'm so not used to getting them um because I just have less eyes on on my platforms and stuff now and the people that are still following me are the ones that are usually like the most loyal the, like the most engaged with my content so they're not going to be mean um but if my video goes viral on TikTok or something and I'm exposed to a new audience that's always really scary and I see people doing those like anonymous question box things where people can ask questions anonymously. And I'm like, no, I, that, that is terrifying to me because I know that people would jump at the chance to ask questions that I don't want to answer or like, not, not that, I've, that I have anything to hide, but like, I don't want them to like ask questions that are going to make me feel bad about myself or insecure or I don't know. I just... It still definitely sticks with me, um, you know, that period where I was getting a lot of negativity. But I think after a while, you kind of get like a really strong support network around you. And um, obviously, I've got Reese, which he really helps if I'm having a bad day or something like that. I've got great family, great friends. So I think that really helps. But you also kind of just become more aware of the kind of person you are. And you can become more confident in that person. and you know who you are so when people say mean things about you you're like well that doesn't actually affect me because I know that's not true but that only really comes with age I find it's like a yeah it's it takes time to get to that point and it's not an easy road that's for sure I'm just gonna wait for this eye to dry and I'm gonna clean up some of the mess I made <laughs> oh someone's nice she said I tapped all the way back from the real job question there's no such thing. As long as you're making enough money to support yourself, then it is a real job. Exactly. That's such a strange thing for someone to <laughs> ask. Oh. Are you planning on permanently sterilization? Permanent sterilization of, for yourself since you want to remain child free? God, that sounds so clinical. Um, recently, I actually listened to an episode of Stuff You Should Know. It, was, it wasn't even intentional. It just happened to be the next one that I had to listen to on um, vasectomies. And I think when we get to a point where, like, we, there's no doubt in our minds, I mean, I really cannot see us having kids, but while I'm really confident that we're not going to go down that path, that there is nothing about having children except for, like, you know, the obvious things, like, oh, it'd be cute to have your own little kids, but, like, at a very superficial level, like, the thought of that is cute, but the reality of everything to do with that just does not appeal, appeal to me, and the sacrifices... Oh my god, I genuinely couldn't think of anything worse at the moment in this point in my life. My camera died, I couldn't complete my <laughs> thought. <laughs> While we're sure we don't want them, you never know if you get a few years older and something, your biological clock's gonna flick a switch and then all of a sudden you're desperate for kids. Look, chances are slim, but never say never, can't say for sure. How cute does Mia look? I mean, I probably wouldn't be the one to sterilize like myself. Like, I wouldn't 
do that. It would be Reese that would get a vasectomy, I think, um, because it's ch way cheaper for men to do it. Although this wasn't in, in that podcast, and that's an American podcast, so, I mean, the American healthcare system is kind of a mess. So I don't know about how it works in Australia, but it's a lot more complex for women to do it. It's a lot more risky and stuff like that. So for men, um, it's really quick and easy and cheap, but the reversal can be a lot more expensive and you can also inhibit your chances of falling pregnant, like sperm and not kind of whatever, if you do change your mind. So at this point in time, there's just no, like we, we don't, it's not like we need to do that. We have birth control <laughs> um, methods in place that work. So we just don't need to go down that route. But yeah, for sure we'll consider it if we get to a point in our lives where we're like, yeah, we just don't, do not want to ever have kids, <laughs> ever. Which again, is how we feel now but it's just not worth doing something so extreme right now for us. There's like the, the pros of that don't really outweigh the cons. How long do you think you'll grow your hair? Cause I'm growing it out by the way. Um, I don't know, probably like down to there. I want it to be long enough that I can have like some big curls at the bottom, but not so long that it's too long like how it used to be. I don't know. I still haven't really decided that. Not a question, but I would love to see some decorating content when you move on YouTube. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I asked on my question box too. My battery is flashing, so if it shuts off randomly, that's why. Um, that's what I asked on my... Oh, I don't actually ask a question, but I spoke about like not knowing what my niche is on YouTube anymore. So like, even if I wanted to film more videos, like I don't really know. And I actually have done polls on this, and people basically just say it's like everything. It's a bit of everything. That's why they follow me now. It's like... I don't, not just makeup anymore, like I do all kinds of different things, like lifestyle, fashion, birds, <laughs> weeding now apparently. Um, so yeah, gardening, so I would think I would definitely do stuff like that. Decorating, I mean I, I would love to when the, when the house is ready, you know, when that will be, probably early next year. But um, yeah, I mean that's awesome to know that people would like that kind of content because I'm sure I would look forward to doing it. So if you, there's anything you would like to see from me, let me know in the comments. What do you use on slash do to your brows? Tinting, feathering, etc. Um, I had them microbladed a few years ago. I've had it, and then I've had it touched up. And then I've tinted them a couple of times, but I don't think I really like the outcome um, of that. So I'm not going to do that again. And other than that, I just use my lunch face products, which will be available early next year, I believe. And yes, Lounge Face should be restocking soon. I mean, jeez. If you follow me on Instagram, you know the absolute ordeal this has been. I don't even want to go into it here because it's going to get me all worked up again. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I'm not waiting any longer. Much longer, at least. Damn. It's really been pushing my limits. <laughs> What do you do if the person you're with doesn't open up to you, but you love him? Ah, uh, that is a hard one. I am infinitely grateful that I am with someone like Reese, who is very open with his, his emotions. It would be so difficult to try and connect with someone, especially men, and I understand that a lot of them, you know, the act of being like open and just being an open person in general isn't really encouraged with men. Like, you know, you kind of just told to suck up your feelings and that kind of thing. I think Reese has always been emotionally available, which is incredibly helpful. I don't know, I mean, it depends what kind of issues it's causing in your relationship. Like, I'm guessing it's causing some kind of issue if, if, if it's an issue for you that is not open. But because I don't really know what issue it is um, in particular, it's hard to really know how to respond, but Oh, I don't know. I don't even have advice, unfortunately, because it's so hard for someone who isn't open to be open. I've seen it ruin relationships before, but I also understand why they find it so difficult. Because, you know, their parents or their dads in particular, a lot of the time, don't encourage that kind of openness. Because it's seen as, like, not being masculine, which is insane. But I wish you all the best. Sorry, I couldn't really be of more help. I mean, you're probably not going to know that I answered your question because I'm answering it on YouTube and not on Instagram. Do you and Reese get pressure from family slash friends to have kids? No. Luckily. Very luckily. Gosh, if we got pressured from family, I'd be so upset. 
my parents have never put any kind of pressure on me um, to have kids. Reese's parents never have. He's got a huge family with lots of like, nieces and nephews, so I don't think anyone's like waiting on him to have kids to make more grandkids or anything like that. Um, my friends would never put pressure on me. I'd be so weirded out if my friends were like, please have kids. Oh my God, you should have kids. Oh, that'd be weird. But they also know that I'm really vocal about being child free. So I think they would know that it wouldn't be received well. And even I was speaking to my nunna, I was talking to her and then my auntie about not having kids and stuff. And they were both like in support of it. They were both great. Um, even my nunna said that she knows someone who had kids who, if they could go back, like wouldn't have had them. Um, and not in a way of like, oh my God, I hate my kids. Like they still, you still, that's, that's the thing that people don't understand. Two things can be true at once. Like you can absolutely love and adore your children forever and ever and ever. You'll jump in front of a bus for them. You'll do anything for them, but you don't like being a parent. You don't like being a mother. You don't like motherhood. You wish you didn't have children. It's not that you wish you didn't have your child. It's just that you wish you didn't go down that path in the first place. Like they love their child and I'm sure it's a very complicated feeling for them. It's just that motherhood, it was a lot harder. It really disrupted their life and their identity and their future and all these kinds of things. So I think it's, and I get so many messages like that in my DMs from women um, who know that my platform is a safe place and I am a safe place for them to talk to or a safe person to talk to because I'm not gonna expose them or judge them. And so many of them uh, say that they, again, love their children but wish they didn't become a parent, wish they didn't, like, it's just so much harder. And some of those people are the ones that like desperately wanted kids. So, I don't know. I think we don't see enough of both sides of the story on on, on social media or just in the, in the media in general. Like you always really see, only really see that parenthood is, motherhood is like the best gift that you can give to yourself and your family in the world. It's like, even I saw a video that Julia Fox did, she's a legend about um, having a kid and how it's sold to everyone as like the best thing that you can experience in, in your life, but it like, it screwed up her life and it made her life worse. And she loves her kid and you can tell in all of her start, like she loves her child more than anything, but yeah, I just, I just, gosh, I just cannot see myself doing that. <laughs> and I said in my stories yesterday, that I used to say like, oh, you know, Reese and I just love being selfish. But it's like, what on earth is selfish about not having children? I find that so weird that people use that as an argument. Like, oh, you're not having kids, that's so selfish. As if like, the world is short of people. Ah, the world is not burning into a crisp and we're gonna die soon anyway. <laughs> no, that's unrelated. That's not the reason why we don't want kids. Um, but it's like, What's selfish about recognizing being in, being a mature adult and recognizing that I love my life exactly as it is and I don't feel like anything's missing and so why would I want to go messing with that? Why would I want to change that? Why would I want to give in to the pressure that everyone else puts on me as in everyone else is in like society and even some people in my DMs and do something to satisfy them that I know isn't right for me? Like how is that, satis how, how is that selfish? recognizing that my life is good as it is and I don't need to go messing with it. And we don't feel like, we're, like there's not a void in our lives. It's just crazy. It really is crazy. As I say, I would rather regret not having kids than regret having kids. And then people say, you would never regret having kids. Well, you've probably either had a really good experience or the people in your life aren't being honest with you <laughs> because a lot of people do regret having children, but they don't feel safe talking about it because of the judgment. Spend like 30 minutes on the child-free uh, subreddit. <laughs> I'm a part of that and it's just, it re literally, like, obviously it's biased because everyone there doesn't want kids and passionately they, they don't want kids. But it's also a lot of people that are brutally honest and that are sharing their um, stories of like the people that they've known in their real life that have had kids that have been, again, honest with them because they can be because they know that that person's not gonna judge them like the rest of society probably would. Um, like sharing their experiences with motherhood. And then on the opposite hand, I've got friends who 
have always wanted to be mothers and they make the whole experience look like something that is like they their experience is like the experience that is sold to all of us as being this magical amazing experience like they are natural mothers their experience has been beautiful easy effortless like they've had great kids that have been really easy to take care of like even Carissa Pukas like from YouTube she has and I've told her this like your experience seems like the goal experience when having kids like it just seems like it's been this, the whole thing is just so naturally like your baby has just fit into your lives perfectly and it seems like it's like she was always meant to be a parent and so of course you would have those experiences too but there's just such polar opposite sides and i don't think enough people think seriously enough about having kids um because it's just something that we all are meant to do it's like people literally have made me feel like i am nothing if i don't have children like i am a vessel that is only here on this earth to give birth like i am here to procreate and then die like I'm, I'm, I'm useless unless i am a mother like i'm meaningless i'm worthless i'm purposeless i'm purposeless i have no purpose unless i'm a mother which is my issue which is what really bugs me um but that's kind of what we've been sold by society for so long it's like women's women are mothers and men are like providers and but that thing that that's changing so much now like even i'm pretty sure it's gen z like the interest in having children um, from young people is severely declining um because we're aware of our options now we have options and it's not expected of us just to bear children when we reach a certain age and so many people that have kids should not be having kids because they can't even take care of themselves and then these poor kids are being neglected especially when parents don't like address their mental health issues and so they're passing their trauma down onto their kids and it's just this vicious cycle of like generational trauma <laughs> anyway <laughs> i got a bit deep in that i'm gonna apply uh lips now i'm gonna use my og urban decay 24 7 lip gl glide on lip pencil in naked 2 and then the morphe what is this I'm, I'm an old person. I'm, I'm doing this. I literally, this text is so small. My eyes go blurry when I read really, really, really small text. Does that mean any glasses? Boho. I don't know what it is though. It's just this. Like a lip gloss. Are you engaged or did you just decide to tie the knot? I am engaged. Not that you'd know because a whole thing with my ring. We ended up getting a different ring. Um, and I'm just waiting for it to be made. It's just really simple. It's just like my the promise ring that Reese gave me for like five years ago or something. It's just like a ring of diamonds, but it's got two layers and it's just really simple and I really really love it, which is right up my alley. Um, perhaps I'm just not like a tr traditional person because even with marriage, I'm like we're both kind of just. It's the union that we love. It's the symbolism. <laughs> it's the. It's what it means. My sister said this, it's, um, she read somewhere that's like, it's not the act of getting married, it's the being married that appeals to us. I don't care about the wedding, I could not care less about the wedding. I'm not going to buy a fancy dress, I just, I think it's a waste of money, like, all this money spent on one night, but then that's because of my values. I've got friends that have spent heaps of money on their wedding because that's all what they've always dreamed about, and in which case it's worth every penny, but everyone's so different, so... You know what works for one person isn't gonna work for somebody else and so we're probably just gonna elope keep it super low key and um yeah very true to us very true to our personalities we're very similar people in that way how are you do you feel good and confident without any tan on i'm doing really well thank you a little bit stressed for the whole like mascara situation but i think we're on I, th I think we're like on our way out of it which is good so i'm feeling a little bit more relaxed do you feel good and confident without any tan on um i'm definitely getting better i'm getting there i'm trying i'm like actively trying to get there because for so long i really found it hard to um, embrace my fair skin and also i genuinely don't think that makeup sorry i gen genuinely think that makeup doesn't look as good on my fair skin it's like all the mistakes show up and like the redness still peeks through and it looks more patchy 
everything just looks so nice when I've got a tan. It makes me feel like I've got like just life and glow and warmth to my face. But I do still, I am really trying to get there. And I think I'm, I'm the closest I've ever been to feeling like still feeling quite confident without it. In fact, I'm, I think it also just depends on what I'm wearing as well. Like if I have a nice outfit on and like my normal skin color and like some mascara and brows or something, I genuinely, generally do feel confident. Uh, it just depends on, yeah, I think it's kind of just like, it's a, it's a fact, it's a combination of a few things. So with this, I'm basically just using on the outline, on the border of my lips, to make them look more full. But I often find when I wear lipstick these days, I usually go for a nude, like a much lighter shade on the inner bit of my lip. But then I often do find that it looks my, my lips look better once I've like eaten something, once that lipstick has been removed from the inner part of my mouth. It looks too makeup y if I've got like a, an opaque color on my lips. So I, I usually end up just like removing it from the inside, which ends up just looking like this. So now I've just basically started applying this nice kind of nude pinkish lip um, to the perimeter of my lips. Makes them look a little bit fuller, but it still looks like my looks kind of like my natural color which i like but anyway that's the look guys my um i'm really happy with how it turned out cheeks look really nice love that blush color i can't believe i haven't used that before i probably have but i not frequently enough i always use the dim infusion i think it is well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A. Don't forget to let me know what kind of videos you like to see from me in the future. I think I'll probably spend a lot more... I'll put a lot more effort into my YouTube. I'll maybe not a lot more effort. I'll put more effort in. I can't make any, any promises. I've got more on my plate these days. But more effort into my YouTube. When we're in the new house, when I have like a nice backdrop. This is such an ugly backdrop. Like I'm, I'm aware that this does not look nice. <laughs> um, but at the new place, I'll make sure everything looks nice and be properly set up. And I'll have, I'll just feel more, just inherently like more motivated because of that. So, and I look forward to that. And I would love to do lives as well eventually, but I just one step at a time. I'm assuming the next few months are gonna fly by anyway, so hopefully it's not gonna be too long until we are in the new place. I mean, this year is pretty much almost over. What on earth? I'm 30 in January. This very start of January, I'm 30. The big 3-0. It's wild out here, folks. It's wild. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I love you all so much. It was nice to speak to you all. It was a one-sided conversation. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.